um, build the, the house on their land. Um, they, you know, they, they paid so much money that it took them a year to pay the land before they bought it. And for them, this key represented the hard work that they, uh, they uh, put into the house. And then they ended up refugees, one of these guys are people. So since the girls are born from them, and we've seen on television people being driven out of their homes, especially from North Gaza, and being sent down south. It has triggered so many uh, memories for me through my grandparents, the intergenerational trauma, and it has affected us so much the past uh, five months. It has affected all our community, our community in Australia, whether Christian or Muslim, are uh, uh, feeling the trauma of what's happening. It's renewed the trauma that the grandparents have been feeling. And as you know, we feel helpless that nobody is calling for a ceasefire, nobody is calling for aid to come in, no food, no water. We have family in, um, uh, in the churches right now in North Gaza. Uh, there's about 1,200 Christians sheltering in the uh, Greek Orthodox Church, St. Porphyrios Church in, uh, in North Gaza, as well as the Holy Family Catholic Church. There's hundreds of people sleeping on uh, mattresses, uh, sponge uh, mattresses. Uh, right now they've been sleeping since October in communal rooms. Uh, many have been sleeping in the uh, Catholic schools as well. Uh, and people have been waiting for food to come in. Uh, they've been waiting to even try to get out because, uh, as you know, uh, everything around the churches in North Gaza has been destroyed and turned to rubble. So about a month ago, one of my cousins who was staying there, um, who we, we applied for a visa to come to Australia, he called me and said, I just walked out of the church just to see what's happening because the Israeli army walked out and he said, all I can see is rubble. The only building standing are the two churches. So, uh, no hospitals, no schools, no universities, no houses. Uh, and for the past um, three months, we've been welcoming Gaza families here that have been able to get out. Some people had to pay thousands of dollars in bribes to get out. Uh, so they come here with nothing because they've just paid the last penny that they saved. Um, and our community, uh, especially our organization, Palestinian Christians in Australia, raised whatever money we could, uh, plus the Orthodox Church and the Open Orthodox Church connections. And we've taken it upon ourselves to house those families and, um, you know, set up houses for them, take up the lease under our association's name to hold the risk. Um, French their homes, drive around from one side of Sydney to the other to carry, you know, use, use good used furniture so that they can feel that they, uh, their life, they can start their lives. Um, but there are hundreds of these people are still waiting for them. Now, this does not also um, undermine that there are also two million people in Gaza right now. A million and a half of them are down in the south in Rafa, living in makeshift um, uh, tents, uh, sleeping under mud, uh, waiting for food to come in. And as you know, if you've heard the news today, uh, eight convoys in North Gaza that finally got some food, um, with 100 people being shot just to go and get food. Yeah. They are dying to get food and literally dying to get the food. Uh, so I call on you brothers and sisters in Christ. I call on you brothers and sisters in Christ. You are the call. I will call for justice because this is not three months ago or four months ago event. This is since 1948. The ethnic cleansing of Palestinians from their land in order for somebody else to go and live in their houses. My grandmother um, 
and yearned to go to her house and it took her about 30 years to end up visiting her house in London because it, it was still standing and it turned out that a Jewish family was placed in that house straight after they were uh, taken out. Um, my job this was the same furniture, they left the same furniture, the clothes and the cupboards, the pots and the pans in the kitchen, they left everything for somebody else to go and use it. It wasn't, they didn't even take out any of that furniture, they used it for the next family. We found out that that family from the Jewish family that was placed in my grandmother's house, were Holocaust survivors as well, so they were also victims to the same violence that my grandparents were subjected to. So I call on you brothers and sisters in Christ to know that this is not about Jewish, Israeli, Palestinian. This is about man's inhumanity to man. That the, um, the culture of violence gets translated and transmuted from one group of people to another. And I just want to share with you one last thing about my grandmother's story because I think there's hope in that story. Um, she yearned to go and see her house and uh, I was probably about 10 or 11 years old when, we, when she decided to go and visit the house because uh, that was about 1981, 82 and it was after uh, Israel took over also the West Bank because my grandparents ended up in Ramallah in the West Bank. And so the whole country was open, you know, from the West Bank to Israel proper. So we ended up visiting my grandparents', my, my grandparents house. And my grandmother took my cousin who spoke Hebrew, knocked on the door, asked him to uh, see the house because they told him she used to live here. Uh, the Jewish man was actually very uh, shocked. He didn't know that he was living in someone else's house. But he was so shocked that he couldn't handle it, so he closed the doors of the door on us. And my grandmother cried so much that day. I can't believe how much she cried. And I think that's when I ended up with the trauma. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I started crying at the time. And she said to me, she said, um, Susan, don't worry, he might be living in my house, but I'm the one with the key. That stayed with me, that stayed with me for over 40 years, to know that she's the one who bought the land, she built the house, and she didn't enjoy it, somebody else lived in it. But she still was holding on to the key, knowing who the real owner of that house is. It's the one who built it, and the one who bought the land and paid it over 12 months to pay the installments on that land. Uh, to be honest, the Jewish man was really nice. He contacted my cousin, because he lives not far away from him, and he asked him if you know my grandmother would come and visit the house, because she just, she, all she wanted was to walk in the house that she lived. And so he invited her to come in and my grandmother walked in the house. And she was very grateful that he did. And a few years later, this, uh, this man ended up um, selling the house and he sold it to one of the Waha girls in the community. So the house now is back in the Waha family again. <laughs> which is, you know, it's nice to know. But my grandmother never saw that, never lived in that house. But she still hold on to it, turn on to the key. So the key out of this is that there are good people out there. Good Jewish people, good Palestinian people, good Muslim people, good Christian people. And us, us good people, will allow allowing leaders like Hitler, like Netanyahu, to speak language of violence, to keep the violence going. We're not allowing good people to come and speak, to speak the truth, to talk about peace, because the fruit of peace is justice.
my dear brothers in Christ, the fruit, sorry, the fruit of peace is justice. Because if we work towards justice rather than work towards favoring one group of people over another, for whatever reason, maybe they have more money, maybe because they look prettier than us, it does not matter. What matters is that we're all a human being. We have to work and strive for justice for everyone. For everyone. Because that's what Jesus will do. So I ask you to ask for justice for the Palestinian cause. There is a cause here because millions of people have been displaced over the, the past 10 years. And on your TV screens right now, you are seeing two million people destroyed, uh, uh, their, li their lives have been destroyed, they've, they've been displaced. Wake up to the truth and to the reality. There's two people on the land, the two people should share the land, and we should ask for that, not ask for elimination of one group of people so that the other group of people can survive. We want everybody to survive. That's what Jesus would do. So I ask you to let justice roll like a river, because that's what that's what Jesus wanted us to have on this earth. If you would like to share, just to just to um, join us in prayers every night, Christian Christians in Australia. Uh, we do Zoom uh, prayers from 9 to 9.30. We've been doing that since the beginning of the war. It's led by um, a charismatic uh, Christian Catholic healer uh, who is on our board, Gustavi um, Pastori, uh, and he comes from Jerusalem as well. Um, and, um, you know, he's been praying for us. He's been inviting people to come and share with us our Zoom prayers online. Please join us. Let us stop this war. Let us stop the hatred. Let us start looking at both people worthy, worthy, both worthy of love and of justice. Thank you so much.